Hey folks, PC7 here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're having a look at another indie early access game. This one called, believe it or not, GameCore DX. And it is, um, well, in some ways very similar and in some ways very different from a number of other games in this genre. And I don't mean tycoon or time management, I mean actually game development type genre. Um, different in such a way as this one tends to put a little more emphasis on the actual time management and, well, business management as opposed to the actual game development. Now, don't get me wrong, you do, uh, you do develop games, and, uh, let's get ourselves a studio name here, shall we? Uh, let's call it in that place. Just for the heck of it. And we'll pick for an icon. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what that is. There we go. Perfect. We're going to start a game. Now, I have already actually gone through this um, tutorial. But I'm going to run it again because it is a really good demonstration of how this game works. Um, the first thing I sort of point out up here in the upper... Um, left hand corner besides all of this stuff oops i'm moving my <laughs> game screen around besides all of this but this hire a worker one of 28 this is something else that's a little different you do get this sort of a back behind the scenes quest line going on and it's really neat because it, it kind of shows you how to advance forward um well, guides you forward, sort of, let's say, even after the tutorial ends, you sort of go, all right, now I'm doing this and this, where do I go from here? And this thing really does a good job of letting you know that answer. But let's get on with this. We've got uh, Mr. Howdy, the assistant. <laughs> Don't know, it's probably not his name, right? Here to help create the best game dev studio ever. Lovely. Okay, you need workers, so let's hire some. Well, let's do that. Now, a bit of advice, guys. I have played this tutorial through a couple of times. The reason I played it a couple of times, the first time I kind of picked up on what was going on and got a little bit ahead of the dude. If you do that, you might get stuck. So, kind of watch and make sure that things are... Like, I know clicking on this desk will bring up what he wants, but, you know, sort of let him go with the flow, make sure things stay synced. It is early access, and this is, believe me, one of the more forgivable type of things if your tutorial, like, somebody rushes ahead and gets it out of sync. So let's do what he says. Let's hire our worker. And we're given some choices, and there's some sort of important things going on here. Whenever you're given workers to hire, you'll see there'll be a little thing here, like this guy, Thirsty, uses the water cooler often. All right, so he's going to be getting up from his desk and waddling over to the water cooler every few minutes. So, and he's, all your workers start unskilled, so there's no real differences in their skill levels. This guy is unfocused, so he produces worse quality. That really doesn't sound very good to me. And this guy is drowsy, so he works slower. Yuck. <laughs> um, wow, man. I... can I do this? No, same dudes. <laughs> Alright, well it appears they're uh, kind of determined to uh, not give me anything super duper right off the bat. Alright, we're going to hire Mr. Water Cooler, dude, because you have to sort of do something. Now we gained 1500 bucks for that. Here's our money up here in the top above the clock. So, now do the same. Hire another worker for the second empty workstation. So click, click, Ick. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to hire... Uh, work slower. Hmm. Or unfocused and produces worse quality. Ha. Well, I don't know what the heck. We'll go with this guy. And maybe at some other point we'll do better. <laughs> All right. Your workers will start coming in soon. So, over here are any sort of messages, objective completes, etc. You can simply click on them and they go away. 
So, but they will allow you to keep in track if you've missed something. You oh, that's what's going on. All right. So, uh, I think we can also uh, close this off for now. All right. Good. Your workers will start coming in soon. Now we need to get them to work on a project. Now, see, here's the problem: is it's six o'clock in the morning. All right. And our workers aren't going to come in until we can unpause this. They don't come in until 8 in the morning. So let's open this. Click a new project. And so we're going to get a micro because that only requires two, um, two workers. Small requires, I believe, four. Uh, medium, I think, is like six or eight, and then a large is like, oh, team size 20, team size 10, sorry. Okay, so that is four. This one, you need 10 people to take on a medium project, and 20 people to take on a large, so wow. And then, if you look at the breakdown of your different games, you'll see you've got, your first bar here is for code, so you want someone good at coding because there's apparently a fair bit to do for a shooter. This is artist, the little paintbrush, fair bit of artwork to do. This is sound, so you need good sound. And this is writing, and it does require a little of that. As you can see, each different genre requires different stuff, like very little coding for a horror flick, but tons of writing. You know, uh, conversely, get down to a new strategy game, lots of coding. Writing's not that primo, you know what I mean? And then you get some that are a little more balanced. So, anyway, he wants us to build a micro, so we're just going to stick with... You can change your name, but a word of warning, change it on this screen, otherwise you're going to get whatever they've labeled it. And in this case, I don't care. We're going to go with Shooter, we're going to call it Mass, and we're going to continue. All right. Oh, we have to click him to continue. Okay, a bar indicating amount of work needed for that particular task. Yep. Alright, I sort of just explained all that. Sorry. So we're going to pick a size, pick a genre, click continue. There we go. Now these are the two guys we hired, right? Leonardo at the frog and John the squirrel. So, as you can see, they're not good at anything. Their bars are empty. So, here we select our team. Now we're going to select the tasks, and again, they want them to pick predetermined things. Now, the reason this makes a difference is if you train a worker at a certain task, let's say coding, anytime you click on coding for him to do in a game, you'll sort of get a little bit of a bonus out of it, and he'll also train up in it. Whereas things that he doesn't have training in, he won't get any experience in. You have to actually train them in different things. So we'll continue. All right, and these are the things that you actually trade them in. Like your code guy, you'll see he starts knowing Game Creator, a basic engine, I guess. Um, and then he learns United, Surreal Engine, and Tri Engine. So yeah, not hard to figure out where they're going. Same thing, your artist starts with a basic paint program, gets to learn Photoshop, Mayans, and TDS Mix. So yeah, Notepad, WordPad, etc., Wave Creator, you know, Fruit Loops, and yeah, you recognize all these. Anyway, <laughs> so there we are. This is your tool screen. Now, of course, everybody's basic. We can't do much. So we are going to click Create. All right, now he's actually got time running. Now, here's the problem, like I said. All right, our workers will not actually now get to work, and in fact, will not get to work until 8 a.m., so you don't want to get too far ahead of this guy. You can click the buttons on the clock to speed up time. There we go. Now we can. But, again, he won't let us go back to it. And here comes our workers. All right, pre-production, where the guys sit around at the table and go, Oh, that's cool. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And then, once they're done figuring all these things out, bounce ideas, and then they actually sit down and start typing up the code. 
Okay, now we get to click on this, and it will actually show us how we're doing. See, here's the guy that makes lots of trips to the water cooler. That guy has a little nap, then he goes and has a drink. Now he's back, and boom, the game is complete. Of course, at this point, you would immediately slam the pause button. All right, so here you can see an overview of your project. The project is finally complete and ready to be published. Click the Publish button. So you do that, boom, and you can, if you want, um, pick a marketing budget. In this case, eesh, it's a pretty crap game designed by pretty amateur designers. We're not going to spend a whole bunch of money trying to promote this. We're just going to get it out on the market. So, yeah, or as he puts it, an inexperienced team, and it's a low quality. These stars are sort of your quality rating. All right. So, we're going to pick none, as he advises. And then we're going to click Publish. You get a little cutscene thing, which you can skip through if you want. And then you get, uh, you know, Total Biscuit, IGN, Rocks, Paper, Shotgun, etc. But in this case, Total Crumpet, VGN, Boulder, Paper, Shotgun, and Kodaka's... Kotaku. Wow. So there we go. As you can see, we sucked. You know, buyer beware. It's a horrible game. Poor mechanic, poor gameplay. Wow, it sounds like half the games I've been looking at to buy on Steam lately. Anyway, and an assistance note. Don't worry about the scores. We knew this would suck. All right, so we continue. So there we are. We have now made a game and it is generating revenue. They won't let me stop the clock. Yuck on you. Okay, you can view project stats on a stats window. This one. So you can see it's so far not actually selling anything, but we'll get to that later. And you unlock the build button. Click on it. Boom. All right, now they want us to hit this. They want us to buy one of these, which is a workstation. And we're going to tuck it up there. Now he's going to teach us how to train workers. All right. There we go. Alright, now get out of build mode, you just hit the button again. So, we've done that, and select your training cubicle. Click on train a worker. Okay, now we're going to pick a worker. In this case, we're going to pick Leonardo. And we are going to train him in code. It's going to cost us $3,000. And uh, let's train the guy. So, he'll now start learning a new specialization. Beautiful. You create a game, newly learned tool. Come on, boy. There you go, Leo. Why are you limping, man? Alright. A new rival studio is opening next month. Click on the general button to view global game and studio charts. Boom. That doesn't tell us much. Game charts, we only have one. Ooh, it's 150 sales so far, five bucks a piece. Yeah, micro games sell for five bucks. Um, small games sell for 15, etc., etc. Right up to your. Uh... All right, so there's nobody else yet. This is our bank, our workers, our quality, the highest game quality so far, and awards, which we haven't gotten to yet. But these really help. Um, if you win, like most productive studio, you'll pay cheaper wages, etc., etc. And these things stay with you for the entire year. So, whoops, we've hit the end of the month. Um, we made a thousand bucks off our game. Of course, it cost us considerably more than that. Plus, we hired workers, etc., etc. So, yeah, we lost a whole bunch of money that month. All right, let's close this. And create the best games, clean up the awards. They offer significant bonuses that will help immensely. And that's the end of the tutorial. Okay. So, actually, I'd like to pause that. We've gotten rid of Buddy. Everybody's gone home for the night. Okay. Now, if we look up here, we'll see Publish a Project. So, we need to uh, get a game published. So, let's uh, fast forward, get these guys to come back to work. 7 a.m. And 8 a.m. And, oh, okay, Leonardo's got to finish his training thing, so let's just get him through that, shall we? Meanwhile, his buddy's going to sleep. And since you need at least two people, even for a micro-project, at this point you're a little bit screwed until Leo's done. So, uh, we built a training cubicle. 
awards in three months, new rival studio, Vampire is opening, and etc, etc. Alright, so let's just let Leonard finish here. Come on, Leo. See, your partner likes this, because he's the one that likes to nap all the time anyway. Alright, and we're there. He is done training. So, that took half a day. At this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm now going to train John as an artist, okay, so that he can learn Photoshop. It's going to cost us two grand. Let's get John a training. Let's go to the fastest speed. See, we just can't get this over with. And we're done for the day again. You know, our releases made us three grand. Luckily, that's only 244 bucks in the hole this month. And we will eventually uh, start actually making money, right? We've got to create a project. They're going to give us 35 grand for the first one. So we really want to get on that as soon as done. All right, let's get ourselves a project, shall we? So again, into the project manager, manager, sorry. And let's come up with something. Okay, now we can go heavy on code and heavy on art, providing we don't have much else. We want these last two to be a little on the low side. So let's do a simulator. Okay, let's call it Angry Rome. No. Um, let's call it Sim Rome. Alrighty. And we'll continue on. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely have Leo doing this. And I guess he can work on the sound as well. And we're going to have John work on that, which is, of course, the art which he has some training in. And he can do the writing, since there's not much required. And let's continue. Now, this... Alright... We started with only these basics, but we've trained someone in code, so he can now write in United. But that's going to jack the price of our game up. And he's no longer limited to paint, he now knows Photoshop. But again, jacks the price of your game up. All right. We have nobody trained in specialties for sound and uh, writing, so let's, uh, let's create. All right. And, boom. Let's give them some forward momentum. We can watch the creativity come together on there. So they're confabbing about it. Mm, okay, we're going to do the art this way. The, yeah, the sound and the writing. All right. Now they're going to sit down and actually build the game. Well, after we have a little drink and a little go home for the day. <laughs> Bye. And monthly. Ooh, we only went 10 grand in the hole this month. That's because we're creating a project, right? So let's get this project published, because that's going to bring us a whack-a-noodle of money, which is, of course, what we need. Oh, yeah, a little, uh, little slow to work here this morning, are we? Nice, nice, come on. All right, here we go. Slamming hard on the code. And you'll see Buddy's done the art, so, and he's done the writing, so he's just nodding off, waiting for our other pal here to finish the code and to finish the sound. So, but that's okay, because he likes to nod off, and he likes to go and have things to eat and have a drink and do all of those things. And there we go. Now he's working on the sound, and got to have another drink. And bang, we're done. So this one got 47 stars. It's actually a little bit better effort than our first one. Let's publish it. Yeah, we're not going to sink five grand into this yet because that is still you know not great to say the least so let's publish it and ooh, total crumpus give it two stars this time bgn or didn't like us at all boulder paper shotgun simrome 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 bloody awful mate but they still gave us two and uh total crumpet although he gave us two it thinks five bucks is too much to spend <laughs> So, let's continue. Oops, let's freeze up some time. And uh, buy a plant. They'll give us five grand if we buy a plant. So let's go to our build menu. And there we go. A plant. Nice. 
I'm going to put it right there. Perfect. See, we just gained another $5,000. Now, you do have nice things like move tools. So let's say I didn't like that plant there. I can move it here, you know, or I could move it here or wherever I wanted it. In fact, I think here is a better spot. All right, now let's get back out of our build tool. Now, to gain some 20 grand if we hire a couple of more workers, but I'm gonna do one more micro project with just these two guys, okay? So we get that, that, and that. Um, Actually, no, they'll give us 20 grand on top of that. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's hire some workers. Ooh, all right, this guy has nothing um, sort of holding him back. This guy comes late every day, uh, works slower. This guy's a little more initial money to buy, but he has no permanent downfall. So we're going to hire him. And we're going to have to figure one of these. I'm going to go with the guy that shows up late. All right. So, we now have more money, but we also have to do something else because uh, we could find ourselves a little bit stuck here because of these tables. And this is sort of a, a weird point in this game. Um, you have to have room on a table for someone to sit on both sides, so that makes it fairly limited where you can put them. You also, um, any table on the same row as another table, or connected, I should say, to another table, will act as that table. I.e., if I put another table next door, four people will gather around this table. But if two people gather around it, and I need two people to gather around the other table, won't happen. If they're not working on the same project, they won't sit at the same table. That's an easier way to say it. All right. So we've hired two more workers. They haven't shown up for work yet, but that's cool. That's cool. And what we need to do is, uh, that's done, is to find another micro-sized project. Let's, uh, let's do another simulator. We're going to call it... Actually, no, let's expand our market a little bit, and let's go with a RPG. Ooh, no, we need a good writer for that, don't we? So, we need something that, again, is a little bit lower. Let's get ourselves a shooter. Let's call it... Uh, hmm, shooter. <laughs> and continue along. And we will assign... Uh, Leonardo, of course, is going to work on code. And he sucked at sound. Let's see how he does at writing. And then, of course, John is going to do the art, because he's actually pretty good. And we'll get him to try sound. Continue. And, yeah, we're going to go United. We're going to go Photoshop. And you can see 13K for this project. Let's hit Create. Get out of here. And let's get the time going. Just to see when these other guys... Oh, here comes our other dude. Here's Chris showing up for work and his buddy and as soon as they're here boom 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 pause we're gonna buy another bench uh here oh no that's not what i want i want the learning station there we are training cubicle six grand come out of this and Let's train Chris, who has just showed up, is going to train in sound. So he's going to learn trout loops. Go ahead, go ahead. And our other one, we are going to train Marky I in writing. Perfect. So he will learn WordPad. And with that, we have a project underway. We have two more guys training. And I think we're going to call the episode here. So... Again, so far this may seem fairly similar to the other games in the genre, but you will see as you hire more and more people, and very, very soon, in fact, we'll have a dozen, possibly 20 workers 
Um, but you will see as you hire more and more people how it becomes much more a management game and much less a game development. And that's really cool. Um, kudos to uh, Endless Loop, the studio designing this. They're really, really doing an awesome job. So that's going to do it for us, guys. That's been our first look. That's just uh, up here, by the way, is your escapism. So, uh, oh, that's one thing. As far as the saves go, it only saves at the end of each day. So I'm going to have to actually uh, resume and let this day play out. And then once they head on home for the night... There, let's just see how this little project's going. And we get our pause. Boom. There we go. Now I can uh, exit the game and it will have saved everything right up to this point. So there you are, guys. That's been our first look. Ooh, we can continue now. Oh, hey, bonus. Here we are. We actually, I didn't know this was coming up, so we're going to put a few more minutes into it here. So here we are, celebrating the year's best studios by granting them our prestigious awards. The most productive studio goes to... Da, 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 da. We got that one. Look at that. So we now get to, for the next year, we'll be get cheaper wages. Consistent. Ooh, high quality. Well, that won't be us. That's going to be... Lampier, yes indeed. So next... Is... Uh, highest charted game. Yeah, we've only put out a couple of real low-enders. So, Lampier again. So yeah, they'll end up picking most of these. Highest revenue. Ooh, that's probably not us either. Yep. Ooh. However, largest studio. Okay, we got four people. And this will give us a sales boost. Yes, indeed. There we go. That's the awards for this year. So not bad. So we'll get to pay some cheaper wages and uh, some better sales. Now I'm going to pause this before they come back. So there you go, guys. That's been our little look here. Again, if you want to get out of these, main menu. Yes. All right, there you are. Game Core DX by Endless Loop. Excellent little game, available in early access from Steam. And here's another really cool part. This game is about $4 Canadian. So yeah, less than a price of cu cup of coffee for where most of you live. But till next time, this has been Species 7. Hope you enjoyed our little look. We will definitely be giving this game more attention. But till then, take care of each other, folks. Remember to hit the like button. Feel free to share and favorite. Till next time, take care of each other, and ciao for now.